G'day everyone, my name is Hoi. Have you ever worked on a composite and then needed to export a layer as a JPEG or a PNG, but then you got to do it manually? So just say I wanted to export out this smiling little girl here, I need to go to the layer here, then click and drag it to this no man's land here, and I've got to accept whatever the default file format is, and then I press save. And then I would have to do it for every single layer here. But check this out. I'm just going to double click on the girl layer here and then I'm going to add .png and just watch the side of my screen here in my finder which is the equivalent of Explorer in Windows. So let's press enter or return and check this out. It has automatically saved a copy of the girl layer in PNG just like that. Now the beauty of this technique is that there's multiple file formats that you can save it into. You can also specify the quality of your images, the size of your images, and then export out individual layers like this. Now before you add .png to all your layers, there are a few switches that we need to turn on. There's also some other things that we need to be mindful of. This tutorial does come with a health warning, which is that it's going to make you a little bit geekier and nerdier. So why don't we geek along together? Okay, so welcome back fellow geeks. Now before we get started, I mentioned that there are a few switches that we need to turn on. So this won't work if you simply just type in .png or .jpg. There's two switches. One is kind of the master switch and then the other switch you've got to turn it on as well. So on a Mac, you go to Photoshop and then go down to settings. On a PC, I believe your preferences are under edit and then somewhere down here is your preferences. So once you go down to settings, just make sure that you go to plugins and just make sure that you've got enable generator checked and then press OK. Now that's this master switch. To switch it on for each individual file, you need to go to file and then go down to automate and then go to generator plugins and then just make sure image assets is checked. Now, if this generator plugins is grayed out, you most likely need to turn on the enable generator, which we just went through. Now, the other prerequisite is that your file needs to be saved. So if your file isn't saved, this isn't going to work and you'll find out later why it needs to be saved. Now with those prerequisites out of the way, let's just walk through very quickly what my composite is made out of. You can use any composite that you want. The most important thing is that it just have more than one layer here. I'm gonna turn off all this and I've started off with this Buffalo Herder. The link to this image is also in the description. Then I extended it through generative fill on the right side, as well as the left side. I put a dark overlay, which is basically just a black layer with 25% opacity. And then I added my logo here. And then I added this girl here. I masked out the background here. And then I just added my slogan, explore the world. As you saw in the intro, it's as easy as double clicking on your layer and then just putting dot PNG and just look at my finder here. I'm going to press enter in Photoshop and it automatically creates it under the same file as your file now. And this is why your file needs to be saved because it's going to use the same name. Now, if I preview this, I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to press spacebar and that is this image here. The beauty, as I mentioned, is that there's different file formats available. So if I double click it again, I can add additional file formats. So comma, I'm going to put girl.jpg and then I'm going to also put comma girl.gif and then comma girl.svg. And those are the four available formats. Now I'm going to press enter on the keyboard and just watch this automatically updates it. So this is the GIF, this is the JPEG, PNG and the SVG. So what you saw here was that I separated each file name with a comma, but I can also separate it with a plus sign instead. So let me just grab this and just expand this out a little bit. So maybe if I want to do girl underscore one and then just delete this comma and put plus and then just girl, whoop, girl underscore two and then plus and then I can just leave this comma. So I, it's interchangeable, you can use both. So let's just look at this, it's going to replace all these. 
So you can see that it's done exactly the same thing using the plus sign here. And you can also mix it up. So I've got plus here as well as a comma here. So for the simplicity of this tutorial, let's just return it back into, say, one instance of the girl PNG. And you'll see that this will automatically update as well. So it will only have one instance and which is the PNG, and that corresponds with my layer here. Now, if I want this girl.png in a subfolder, all I need to do is double click on it, and then I can say my test folder, and then forward slash, and then girl.png, press enter, and then it saves it into my test folder, and within my test folder, I've got this girl.png. I'm using this girl layer as just an example. You can obviously do the same thing for each individual layer here. The other thing that you can do, as I mentioned in the intro, is specify the quality and the size of the image. So let's start off with the quality of the image. So I'm just going to delete all these prefixes and the suffixes so we can start from scratch. Now, just so I want a JPEG, I can obviously put dot jpg here and that will generate a girl.jpg here now when it generates the jpeg file it is generated at 90 percent quality by default but what if i want it at even a lower quality so maybe you're doing a web design work where the banner is going to go onto a mobile phone for example so there's two ways that you can specify the quality so just going to enter into this and then if i want a 50 percent quality i can either press 5 which means that on a scale of 1 to 10 i just want a scale of 5 which is 50 percent here and that will generate another image at 50%. The other way of doing it is to actually type in 50% and that will be exactly the same. So it's regenerated at 50%. Now for PNGs, they're generated at 32-bit by default. So if you want a PNG other than 32-bit, what you can do is rename your layer and say you want a 24-bit and that will generate it here. Now with GIF, the default is that it will just generate with the basic alpha transparency. So I can also specify the size in front of the file name. So if I want, say, a 200%, I can put in 200% girl.png, and then that will generate a 200% photo here. So you can't really tell whether it's generated at 200% because all it's done is just regenerate the file with the same file name. So what we can do just for a test is to generate one at 100%. I'm going to rename this so then we can identify which one's which. So this one is at 200%. And then we're going to add another one at 100% with girl underscore 100 dot png press return or enter on the keyboard and let's bring in both of these images into photoshop and let's compare them so at 100 percent the pixels are 635 pixels by 554 high and this one is double the size 1270 by 1108 so let's return back to our composite here and another thing that you can do is specify the file size. So I'm just going to return this to girl and that will delete it. It won't delete the folder name here. So I can specify by pixels, for example, that I want this by 600 pixels wide times, I'm just guessing here, 400 pixels high and then spacebar, my file name is going to be girl.png and then I'm going to press enter or return and it's going to generate another one here now there is going to be a problem to do with the ratio so let's just preview this now i've just randomly guessed incorrectly that for a 600 pixel wide image it's going to be 400 high which obviously this isn't the right ratio you can see that it's squashed now the one thing that you can do if you know that you want 600 across but you don't know the height of it the beauty is that i can delete this 400 pixels and then just put a question mark and then leave it for photoshop to work it out so let's press enter on our keyboard and now let's look at this i'm going to click 
on this and you can see that it has perfectly put it into the right ratio. So let's bring in this into Photoshop. Now it should be 600 pixels wide and then Photoshop has determined that to constrain it to that ratio, it's 523 pixels high. Now you notice that I put PX to stand for pixels. Actually the default is pixels. So you actually don't need to put PX here. You could just do 600 times or X. That's not actually a times. That's X literally the letter X and then girl. And then maybe I'll just differentiate this by putting a underscore one. And that will give you exactly the same result here. There are also other dimensions that you can put. So I can put inches here. So for example, I can put 10 inch IN and then X, the letter X, followed by question mark. That question mark, remember, will leave Photoshop to work out the height. I'm going to press return or enter. And then you'll see that I've got this girl underscore one picture here that should be 10 inches wide. So what it's showing here, it's 720 pixels. So if I just grab my ruler, command or control R, and then just change my measurements into inches, you'll see that it's 10 inch across by 8.722 inch high. Let's go back to our banner here. I can also do millimeters, mm, or I can do centimeters, uh, cm. So 10 centimeters by 50 mm. So I can mix up the unit of measurements. Now, obviously, the ratio of this picture is going to be a bit wonky, but it just to demonstrate the point that I can mix up my units of measure here. The next question that you might have is, well, what if I want this whole image, this whole composite as a flattened layer, as a single JPEG? Well, I'm glad to say that it's very easy. So before we do it, let's just return this to this girl layer here. And what we can do is we're going to make a group out of the whole composite. So click once on the top layer, shift, and then click on the bottom layer, command or control G to make a group. And then I'm just going to rename it, say, travel banner. And then I can say this will be a dot GIF. And watch to the side of this. It's going to give me a GIF. And voila. So this is the GIF here. Now, again, remember, you can do a GIF, JPEG, SVG, or a PNG. The next question that you might have is, OK, what if I want this composite view as well as the individual layers? And it's as easy as just adding the extension of the file format that you want. So for this example, I'm just going to make everything a PNG. You can mix it up if you would like. Before I hit enter, I'm going to press tab and you can see here that it's just gone to the next layer without me double clicking on it. Let's put this as .png and I'll just quickly do that and see you back soon. Now the beauty, if you were watching, is that as I was adding the extensions, it was automatically uploading it to my files here. So let's just check this out. This is the Buffalo Herder. This is the dark overlay. This is my text, the generative fill on the left, the right, and then the girl, and then my logo, and then this is the composite here. The other thing that you can do is what if you want to put all these into a folder? So just say this banner is for both the website as well as the mobile phone version, right? So what you can do is rename this and we're going to rename this to default and just make sure that everything is in lowercase. And what default means is that it's going to go under this default folder here. And the next word will be your folder. So I'm going to put in website and then forward slash. I'm going to add in plus and I'm going to put in mobile and forward slash. So what this will do is put all these images under two folders under travel banners, one in website and one in mobile. So let's press return or enter. And you can see that it's generated exactly what we wanted here. Usually we don't simply just want to replicate exactly the same files in the website version as well as the uh, mobile phone version. So maybe in the mobile phone version, we want this to be, you know, 50% quality or say 60% quality of the website version. So remember what we can do is say 60% 
and then spacebar. And because we want to differentiate the file name from the website name, I'm going to type in, say, underscore and then put mobile. And what that will do is it's going to create a 60% version of all these files here, say, explore the world. And then it's going to append at the end of this underscore mobile so we know which one's which. Let's press enter or return and see what it does. So you can see here with the mobile version, I've saved it as mobile here. So underscore mobile, underscore mobile. And these are 60% of these versions here. Now, obviously, with the website version, I can equally put a suffix to the file name. So underscore website and then press return or enter. And that will generate another version of the website version. So here you can see underscore mobile and then underscore website. So you can put whatever you want here. The file structure, you can go forever so long as you put a forward slash. So for example, in the mobile folder, I can put it under another folder called say iPhone. So double click on that. And then I'm going to put say iPhone here and then put forward slash and then press return. So all this mobile version will be under the iPhone. So if you want to create folders, all you need to do is type in the name of your folder followed by a forward slash. Now remember within each layer, you can always generate different file formats. For example, if I want my logo to also be in a GIF format, I can type in my file name, which I'm just gonna shorten it to logo.jpg or a logo.gif, etc. So you can see here, I've got my website logo here, .png, the GIF version, and the JPEG. I can also do the SVG. The last thing to note is that whenever you turn on the Generate Image plugin, so Generator Plugins Image Asset, I mean, that it's per file. So when you open up another file, you always have to turn on this per file. But once you save it like this, the next time that you open it, it will automatically have, well, it will save this setting here. Now, I know that was a lot to remember, so let's just review what we've learned. The first thing that we've learned was that you need to turn on this generator plugin. So it was under settings and then plugins, and then you had to make sure that you got it enabled generator turned on. Now, the next one was to actually turn it on. So go to file, automate, and then generator plugins and image assets. The other thing that we learned was that your file had to be a saved file, otherwise it doesn't work. The next thing that we learned was that we can, with those switches turned on, we can save under four formats, the PNG, JPEG, GIF, as well as the SVG formats. We could also specify the quality of your images by putting in the percentage behind or before the file name. We also generated assets for each of these layers here, as well as put it into a folder so we can organize it a little bit neater here. So that's it guys. Are you a little bit geeky, a little bit nerdier after this tutorial? I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a like, a comment or a thumbs up if you have.